Today, I thought we would do some hip opening. I feel like the most recent Wednesday practices, we've been doing lots of back and hamstrings, which are just sort of crucial parts of the body for a lot of people who have pain, but a lot of people have tight hips as well. So I thought we would do sort of opening of the front of the body. So hip opening as well as some shoulder and sort of heart opening kind of stuff. So to do that, we're gonna start on our mats. If you have blocks, or anything similar. Um, you can use this to, as always, to augment. But I'm gonna invite you to come on down to your backs. And you can pick any number of postures. I'm gonna put one of these blocks under my back like so, and the other one to sort of support my head. So this starts to open up my chest and my ribs. That's totally optional. For some people, this is gonna to be too intense, especially at the beginning, so just lie flat. You can take the block out and lie flat. And then if you want to start with the hip opening stuff, you can bring the soles of your feet together. And then for your arms, you can leave them down by your side. Or again, if you want to think about that open posture, you can bring your arms to that cactus kind of position. So this is a super open. If you're here in cactus and your legs are in butterfly, this is a very open. It can be quite a vulnerable and emotional position. So just check yourself. If this feels uncomfortable or unsafe, then just adjust so that you can feel comfortable. And then wherever you are, go ahead and close your eyes. And let's take a deep inhale through your nose. Open your mouth and just let it go. And if that felt good, maybe do that again. And then just allow yourself to relax, whatever position you're in. If it gets uncomfortable, of course, you can adjust. Opening, uh, breathing in through your nose and thinking about those hips, thinking about the shoulders, thinking about the chest, everything expanding and then exhaling, letting everything go. Finding that steady rhythm of the inhale and the exhale. Notice as your heart rate starts to slow, as your breath becomes more even, more regular. Notice as maybe your mind starts to quiet. Your mind will never be devoid of thought. That's not the goal. Just letting it be a bit quiet, a bit less frantic. Noticing areas of tension or stress, and breathing into those areas, delivering healing energy to them. And as you exhale, trying to let go of that tension, let go of that stress. always remembering the breath, always coming back to the inhale and to the exhale, whether holding a stretch, moving through a posture, always start and end with the breath. If your legs are in butterfly and Baddha go ahead and pull your knees together, releasing out of that stretch, releasing your arms. If you're lying on a block, be careful here. And everybody, go ahead and just roll onto your side. So if you're on a block, just be careful to roll off the block. Move the block out of the way. And then once you've done that, go ahead and push yourself up, finding a seated position and we're gonna to come to a seated Baddha Konasana butterfly. So bringing the soles of the feet together, sitting up tall, and releasing those knees down, opening through the hips. If you want, pressing on them gently with your arms. As you do that, that can help to lengthen you and grow tall through your spine. 
Take a couple of breaths in and out. And go ahead and release this, rounding over, letting the head drop down, breathing into the back body. If it's really uncomfortable, move your feet out a little ways from your body and that will give you more space. And you can perhaps release a little bit more down. And then rising back up. We're gonna draw one leg in, so you can bring your right foot in, extend your left leg out. So it's gonna go sort of off to the side rather than straight in front of you. Right foot just somewhere up on your inner thigh, and we're gonna do a lateral bend here. So bringing the left arm across the body, reaching the right arm up and over, bringing the gaze up towards the ceiling so that your shoulders are stacked, hips are stacked, chest is open. Mm -hmm. If anything, sit up taller and make it less of a bend. Mm -hmm. And pressing yourself up, bringing the right hand behind the body, left heel presses into the mat, pushing up, pushing that left hip flexor up if you want, reaching the left arm overhead, stretching so you're reaching from left toes to left fingers. And releasing that back down. Switching sides, so the right leg goes out, left foot comes in, uh, right arm comes across the body, left arm lifts up, grow tall, and then just thinking about dropping over to the side. So even if it's only a little teeny movement, the side bend, the lateral bend is more important. The more you go deeper, it's just more of a lateral bend, but keeping the spine long. Inhaling, exhaling. And pressing that up, left hand behind the body, pushing into the right foot and the left hand, push the hip up. If you want, reaching the right arm up overhead, taking a deep breath here. And releasing that back down. Coming over onto hands and knees, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. As Often, if not always, warming up with cow cat, beginning with the base of the spine. Inhaling, moving through the spine, chest and gaze come up last. Exhaling, pulling the tailbone under, pushing into the mat, looking at the belly button. Inhaling, working your way through cow, tailbone to the crown of your head. Exhale, working your way to cat, also tailbone to the crown of your head. I'm doing one more and releasing that. Once you finish that, go ahead and find neutral spine. Reach the hands out in front of you. We're going to curl the toes under, so pushing into the toes and the ball of your feet. And now sit back on your heels into puppy pose. So hands reach forward. We sit back towards our hips. Head releases down. It may or may not touch the mat. Mine doesn't actually touch the mat. Pushing back towards the hips, feeling the length of the spine. Again, imagining someone pulling you gently from an invisible thread from the crown of your head. Someone else is pulling you back from your hips. So you're creating traction in the spine. Good, and bringing that back up. Coming onto your knees, we're just gonna do a little mini back bend here to start to open up the chest and shoulders. Bringing hands to hips. So hips are right over knees, hands are in hips, squeezing the quadriceps, squeezing the gluteals. Push the hips forward, and then pull the elbows towards one another. So really thinking about opening through here, pulling Opening these small muscles here as the elbows pull back, bringing the gaze up to the ceiling. So not so much of a back bend, more of a chest opener, a heart opener. Take a deep inhale and release. One more inhale. And coming into child's pose this time. So the hands come down to the mat. 
Leave the feet on the mat and sit back on the heels. This time letting the head go, reaching the hands forward. Inhaling and exhaling. Rising back up, stepping the right foot forward. Knee over ankle. Option here to stay on this knee or lift the knee up. You decide, but we're gonna bring this to a twist. So you're gonna come up, your left elbow is gonna come to the right thigh and you're gonna turn towards the right. If you want, that left elbow can slide down your thigh, deepening the twist. And again, that back knee, the option's always to stay down or to pop up. You decide what works better for you. Releasing those hands down, step the knee back, drop down to your modified plank. Hands under shoulders, but knees are back from hips. Lowering all the way down, chest, chin, and hips. Release the legs behind you, squeezing the feet together. Inhale, sliding the hands out in front of you, coming to our snakes. So you're on your forearms, propped up. Think about pulling the shoulders back, pulling the shoulder blades together, contracting the glutes, and you're just looking forward right in front of you. Breathing into this. Imagine you can peel your belly button all the way off the mat. You might not be able to, but that's the intention. Working towards that. And releasing that back down, sliding the hands back, pushing up and back. Just one breath in child's pose. So release back into your child's pose, take a breath. And the next time you inhale, come on back to your all fours. This time stepping the left foot forward, left knee over left ankle. Again, same options as we just did. You can stay on your back knee or you can come up on your foot, rising up, right elbow to the thigh, twisting to the left. And then you can stay right there or you can slide that elbow down, continuing to twist more deeply. And if you're stable and if you want to, you can come up on that back foot. Breathing here. And then releasing those hands down to the mat, step the left foot back, releasing the knees, lowering down, chest, chin, and hips. Same thing, inhale, sliding out into sphinx, coming up onto your forearms, pulling the shoulders back. So really focusing here on the upper back, pulling the shoulder blades together. Think about opening the chest. Inhale, exhale. Releasing that down, slide the hands back, push up and back. Same thing, just one breath in child's pose, releasing the back for full inhale and full exhale. And then whenever you next inhale, rising up, pressing up to a downward facing dog, hands reaching in front, heels pressing towards the mat. This is optional, we won't be here long and you always can just do all fours. Walking feet towards hands, letting the head hang over, releasing the spine, letting it go, a couple of breaths, inhaling and exhaling, bending the knees, drop the hips and roll yourself up, one vertebra on top of the next until you come all the way to standing, taking a deep inhale, inhale arms up, and exhale, release. Rolling the shoulders forwards a few times. And rolling them backwards a few times. Good. Releasing that down. Once again, bringing hands to hips. Now I really want you to just think about the shoulder area here. So not so much of a back bend. Hands come to hips. You're in neutral spine, so belly is, is engaged, spine is lifted, pelvis is in neutral. We're not arching our back. From here, just simply pull the shoulder blades towards one another. Not the shoulder blades, well, sort of the shoulder blades, really the elbows. Pull the elbows towards one another. This will close the shoulder blades and sort of open the chest without bending backwards, right? We're just opening the chest and shoulders and release that. 
And again, inhale, pull the elbows back, open the shoulders, and release. One more time, pull the elbows back, pull the shoulder blades together, and then release the hands down into the Tadasana and see if you can still maintain that nice openness here of the chest and shoulders without sticking the chest out, right? It's not this. The spine is in neutral, the head is in neutral, it's just a bit more open than maybe you're used to. Take a deep inhale, and arms extend up. Exhale, bringing the hands to heart center. From here, stepping the right foot back, finding our high lunge. Knee over ankle, right heel is pushing away. So all 10 toes are facing forward. You can make as much of a bend in your front knee as you want. Knees over the ankle, deep bend or less of a bend. And then once you find your stability, extend those arms up overhead. So we're going to make our way to Exalted Warrior. So we're going to twist first. So you're going towards the left. The left arm is shooting behind your body. The right arm is shooting forward. Once you find your stability, let the left arm just release down. Right palm flips up. And you reach that right palm up overhead, maybe following with your gaze. Thinking about the right rib cage, really opening up through there. And then releasing that, coming back to the twist, right arm forward, left arm back. And then bring hands to heart center as you pivot to face forward one more time. Transitioning this to Virabhadrasana 1. So you're simply going to plant your back foot, moving it a little bit forward. Plant the back foot. Now it's at an angle. There's still a bend in our front knee. Our hips are forward. Chest is forward. Shoulders are forward. Hands at heart center. Inhale, extending those arms up overhead again. Transitioning to warrior two. So now we're opening the opposite direction. Right arm shoots back, left arm shoots forward. Knee is still over ankle. Gazing out over that front hand. Think about really pulling the shoulder blades together. Really squeezing the muscles of the back. Inhaling and exhaling. Extending the front leg, hinging forward, long arms, long legs, long torso, reaching, reaching, reaching until you can't reach anymore. Releasing the left arm down, it can find a block. If that's better, right arm comes up, gaze comes up towards the ceiling. Inhaling, exhaling. Thinking about stacking hips, stacking shoulders. Pressing that back up. Pivoting back around, facing the front of the mat, and now you probably need to step the right foot a little bit forward so that all 10 toes are forward, legs are both straight. We're gonna to come to pyramid, thinking really of our chest and shoulders. This also stretches our hamstrings, but I'm focused up here tonight. So hands to hips, hands fist to fist, or palms in reverse prayer. Really pull those shoulder blades together as you hinge forward from the hips, leading with the solar plexus. Finding yourself parallel to the mat, gazing out on the floor just in front of your big toe. Noticing what your hips are doing, trying to make them even. So probably pulling the right hip forward and the left hip back. Inhaling. Exhaling. From here, forward fold, just release into this. You can definitely bend your front knee if you need to and just let your head hang over. Step that left foot back, finding plank. Option to modify your plank or option to stay up in your full plank. Drop down, lower all the way down, chest, chin, and hips. This time, slide the hands out in front of you, planting them on the mat, and press up. So arms are long and extended, squeezing the glutes together, pulling the shoulders down and back, maybe tilting the gaze ever so slightly up. 
and releasing that down, sliding the hands back, curling the toes under, push up and back, coming to one breath in child's pose. Rising back up, curling the toes under, pushing up to that downward facing dog and then walking the feet towards the hands so you're hanging over in your forward fold. Bending the knees, dropping the hips, rolling yourself all the way up. Deep inhale, extending the arms up, opening the chest here with a little bit of a back bend. So pushing the hips forward, squeezing the glutes, gazing towards the ceiling, and then hands come to heart center as you exhale. Stepping the left foot back, coming to high lunge on this side. Right knee over right ankle, pushing through the left heel. Nice and lifted, find that stability. Finding a focal point, same postures on this side. Arms extend up. Twisting to the right, so right arm back, left arm forward, staying nice and lifted. Right arm releases down, left palm flips up, opening up towards the ceiling, maybe bring the gaze up in your exalted warrior. Coming back up to your standing position, hands at heart center as you pivot forward. Planting the back foot, so it probably steps a little bit forward. Pivot slightly to an angle. Hips are forward, chest is forward, front knee is bent. Gaze is lifted. Inhale, extending those arms up. Nice bend in the front knee, but not over the toes, right? So we're keeping the knee over the ankle. And then we open this to our warrior two. Knee is still over ankle, maybe the knee bends a little bit more. Gazing out over the front hand, pulling the shoulder blades together. So shoulders are down from the ears, it's still relaxed, it's just engaging the muscles, different from creating tension. Straightening the front leg, maybe walking the foot, the back foot a little bit closer if that works better for you for your triangle. And then hinging forward, reaching, reaching, reaching with that right arm, letting the right arm drop, finding a block or hanging in the air. And then the left arm reaches up. So shoulders are stacked, hips are stacked, the chest is open. Inhaling, exhaling, pressing yourself back up, pivoting to the front and stepping that foot a little bit closer yet. Hand positions, hands on hips, hands fist to fist or hands palm to palm. Chest lifts, shoulders pull back as we hinge forward from the hips, leading with the solar plexus, finding our flat back position. Keep pulling the left hip forward and the right hip back. Inhaling and exhaling. Flat back, trying to eliminate the roundness of the spine. Gazing out just in front of your toes on the floor. And then release this by bending the front knee and letting the hands find the mat. Step the right foot back, coming to plank. Option is always to modify your plank. Dropping down to knees, lowering down, chest, chin, and hips. This time into cobra, so hands stay right here where they are, under the shoulders. And we press up, elbows squeeze by the side, shoulders squeeze together. Stay nice and low so the elbows are hugging the rib cage and the shoulders are down. And releasing that, pushing up and back to your child's pose. Same thing, just about one full breath cycle. And then rising back up onto hands and knees. This time we're going to step the right foot forward and bring it to the edge of the mat. So all the way to the right side, both hands are in the middle of the mat. For your lizard, a lot of people will want to use a block and you can have that block up on its highest level or anywhere down to the mat. Try to bring your forearms onto the block. You still want knee over ankle. Forearms onto the block and then only if you want to, coming up on the back, the back foot. 
and then just see how this works for you. If this is too high, you could bring it down to the second level, to the lower level, or you could come all the way to the mat. Or you could just stay on the first level. <laughs> Pushing shoulder against your thigh, your knee. Breathing. Lizard is one of the more uncomfortable postures in yoga. I don't think anyone loves lizard pose. But what it's doing is working on that inner thigh area. So just try to breathe into it. And releasing that down. Bring the hands back to the mat, moving the block out of the way if you're on a block, and just step that right knee back, coming to tabletop. Let's do one cow cat, just to make sure that spine is released, pressing up into your cat, arching up. And then coming back to neutral, stepping the left foot forward to the edge of the mat, knee over ankle, same option, bringing your forearms to the block on the highest level, the second level, the lowest level or the mat. Pressing your shoulder against your knee and then option to come up on the back toes if you want. But notice my knee is still always over my ankle. If your foot's way back here, just scooch it forward. Being up on your back foot doesn't give you any more of a hip opener. It just challenges your strength and your hamstring. So if you're on your knee, you're still getting the same benefit here of opening up the inner thighs. Take some nice deep breaths. You don't have to enjoy it necessarily. You shouldn't be in pain, but being uncomfortable is kind of expected. I've taught a lot of yoga, and I've never met anyone whose favorite posture is a is, uh, lizard pose. Release that back knee onto the mat if it's lifted. Press up onto the hands, move the block if it's there. Step that knee back and once again come to child's pose, but this time you can hold it for a few breaths. Just release. Coming back onto hands and knees. Option here just to stay on hands and knees or option to come to downward facing dog. You decide what you'd like to do. If you're in down dog, hands are reaching forward, shoulders rolling away from the ears. Heels are pressing towards the mat. If you're in down dog, lift your right leg, bend your right knee, drop your right foot towards your left. If you're in, on all fours, you can do a couple of cow cats. You can also lift your right leg straight behind you. If you're in your um, down dog, go ahead and bring that leg back to center. Everybody swing the right leg forward, bring it across the body and release into pigeon. Now, for pigeon, if you don't like being here for pigeon, come onto your back. The alternative here is right foot across the left thigh in your figure four position, okay? So that's your modification of pigeon. If you want to do traditional pigeon, do either or. <laughs> That was for you. <laughs> if you want to do traditional pigeon, you come to where I just was. You reach the left leg behind you, lift up through the spine, keep extending the back leg, and keep working that right foot forward. You just don't want to hurt the front knee. So I really like often to stay lifted here. If you want, if you feel like you get more of a hip opener, you can certainly release that forward and come down to the mat. And then you can make a little pillow with your hands. And you just decide what feels more comfortable to you. Resting here or staying lifted. And breathe into this. Again, this is one of those postures that some people love it, many people do not because a lot of people have tightness in their hips. If you're in pain, transition onto your back, go to the modification. But if you're just a bit uncomfortable, see if you can breathe through it. Keep working that foot forward so that it's not stuck under your body. If 
few more breaths here. And then pressing yourself up, unless you're already up. Pressing into the hands, and one more time, just sort of press into this. So you're really thinking of dropping your low body into the mat, extending through your spine. Someone's pu still pulling you up from the crown of your head, pulling the shoulder blades together, opening the chest, maybe bringing the gaze up. I like to think of this as a proud pigeon, puffing out its chest. Good. Releasing that option to just come to all fours or option to come to your downward facing dog, kicking that right leg overhead to give it a stretch. And then placing the right foot down, extending the left leg, bending the left knee, opening the hip here so you're stacking left hip on top of right. Again, feel free to stay on all fours. Skip the down dog altogether if it's not appropriate for you. And then bringing the leg back to center. Everybody bring that left foot forward. Bring it across your body. Release down into the mat. Again, if you prefer to go onto your back in your supine pigeon, that's fine. Stretch that right leg behind you. Careful to not roll and sit on your glute. You don't want to be over here. You want to stay lifted. If you tend to do that, you can wedge this block under you, and that will keep you lifted. Keep working this left foot out so it's not stuck under your body. Keep lifting up through the chest and shoulders, pressing down, release the back foot. And then only if you want to, go ahead and fold forward if that feels comfortable for you. I sometimes feel like I get more of a stretch when I'm in that more lifted position. So just decide, this is more restorative, more relaxing for a lot of us. And breathe into this, so we're feeling this in the left hip. If the knee is bothering you, I'd encourage you to go onto your back and do the modification, left ankle across right thigh in your figure four. Some nice long deep breaths here. And then if you're down, go ahead and press yourself up. Once again, give yourself a moment here, lengthen through the spine, pull the shoulder blades back, bring the gaze slightly up, see if you can scooch that back leg even further back. If you are using a block to support yourself, go ahead and move that out of the way. And then curl the toes under, push up, push back, coming to that down leg, the three-legged down dog, and then place the left foot on the mat. Now walk the feet forward bending over and move your feet to the outer edges of your mat turning your toes out and your heels in your knees are nice and bent you may need a block for this so if you can have a block sort of handy behind you have that there bend your knees so your hands can find the floor and let your hands support you as you bend deeply down into your low squat so this is what your block is for because for a lot of us sitting on the block is going to be more comfortable you want to try to get that spine nice and tall. You might not need the block. You might come all the way down. If your heels are lifted, that's fine. That's super normal. What's most important for me in this posture is that you stay lengthened and tall through your spine. So the block is there to help you do that. Place your hands together. Push those thighs open. Bring your hands to heart center and take some nice deep breaths. And again, if your heels are off the mat, that's okay. Don't worry too much about that. And if you have to sit on a block, don't worry about that. Try to sit tall. This is not a particularly relaxing posture. 
you're lengthening tall through your spine and you're actively opening up through your hips and through your pelvis. So again, while not painful, hopefully not super uncomfortable, it's not necessarily not just hanging out, you're still active. I will not lead you in crow tonight, but if anyone feels like you want to do crow, you of course are more than welcome to do that. We're going to come back to standing, so go ahead and release out of this, round yourself over, press into your floor in front of you so you can push yourself up and come to hanging over forward fold. And heel toe those feet out a little bit further so you're in a wider stance, heels still in, toes still out, releasing over. Bend your knees, let the hips drop and go ahead and roll yourself all the way up to standing. So toes are pointed out, heels are pointed in, bringing the arms to goddess. So those goal post arms, elbows in line with the shoulders. Again, really squeezing the shoulder blades together so you're quite active here. And then we're going to bend the knees, pushing the hips back, trying to track the knees over those middle toes but without collapsing inwards, right? So pushing actively those hips open. Squeezing up, squeeze the glutes together. And lowering back down, chest stays lifted. Shoulder blades stay in. Can you drop a little bit further this time? And squeezing up. One last time, releasing down, bending the knees, pushing the hips back. Three, two, and one. Squeezing up. Bring those toes parallel. Bring the hands behind the back. Clasping the hands together. Pull the shoulder blades back, push the hips a little bit forward, open the chest towards the sky, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, hinge forward, shoulder blades squeeze together, chest leads, and then let those arms reach overhead and release down towards the mat without forcing them. Never force, push, bounce your arms and shoulders in this position. They are very fragile. Make sure you can shake your head no, it's nice and released. And then pull the arms back to bring you all the way back up. Pivot to the front of the mat. Step the back foot forward. Take an inhale. Extend forward as you exhale, releasing all the way down. Inhale, slide halfway up. Hands to shins, flat back, pausing here. Again, think about pulling the shoulder blades together. Elbow in, back is long and flat so it's not rounded over. Holding here just for another breath. And then releasing that all the way down, letting the head go, letting the back round. Inhaling and exhaling. Bending the knees so the hands can find the mat. Step either foot back, followed by the other. Coming to all fours, scooting those feet back so you're in a modified plank. Lowering all the way down, chest, chin, and hips. This time sliding the hands back a little bit so they're about at the top of the rib cage rather than right under the shoulders. Squeeze the legs together, squeeze the feet together, pull the shoulder blades together like the elbows are trying to touch. And we're going to press up to upward facing dog. So pushing into your hands, lifting up from the hips. So you're always lifting. Shoulders are lifting, uh, not lifting, like pulling back but not dropping. Head is lifting and hips are definitely not dropping. And then drop down to knees, push back on your heels, child's pose. This time letting the hands come down by the side to let those shoulders relax. Taking a couple of breaths here. And bringing yourself back up, spinning those legs around, coming to a seated position. So we did reverse plank on Monday. If anyone wants to do that, you can, but I'm just going to offer you uh, the modification, which is tabletop. So hands under shoulders, fingertips pointing towards the feet. Feet are parallel, knees are parallel. The reason we're doing this is for the shoulders, right? So this is very much a chest opener. So once you get up, you want to think about 
still squeezing the shoulder blades together to open up the chest. A lot of us are really rounded through here, and it's because this uh, pectoralis minoris tends to get quite short and contracted when we get rounded shoulders. We want to think about opening them up and lifting, and this is really good for that. So pressing into hands, pressing into feet. The first thing to do is to lift the butt. Once you get the glutes lifted, can you lift a little higher? Get the pelvis parallel to the floor. You're looking down your body so that you're not hurting your spine. From here, can you pull the shoulder blades back? Think about pushing the chest towards the sky. Squeeze the glutes. It's a hard posture, for sure, but it's excellent for opening up the pectoralis muscles. Inhale and exhale. Squeeze the glutes to keep those hips lifted. Squeeze the abs. And releasing that down. Extending the legs out in front of you, flexing your feet towards the ceiling. Take an inhale as you lift up. Exhale, release forward in your Paschimottanasana, letting the head go, letting the back go. Inhaling and exhaling. Rolling that back up, and this time opening up your legs. Uttavista Konasana. So knees are towards the ceiling, toes are towards the ceiling. See if you can sit nice and tall. It's better to have your knees bent and your spine lifted than have your legs straight and your spine rounded. So see if you can sit tall through here. Toes towards the ceiling. This is another one where you might find your block comes in handy, especially if you're less flexible. So what I want you to think about doing is hinging from the hips, leading with that solar plexus again, and then maybe the forearms come to a block. Because if you see, when we do that, what that does is it lengthens us out of our low back. So rather than collapsing over and rounding, we're lifting and hinging forward. And then from there, you can always go further and further but only if that spine is staying long. The minute you start to collapse and round, go ahead and just bring yourself back. What that's gonna do is help you create some flexibility here in your inner thighs, and again, if your knees are bent, that's fine. You're here. If your legs are straight, you're here. So we're lengthening through our spine, we're still keeping the chest open, the shoulders open, rather than collapsing into them, and taking some breaths. Every exhalation, seeing if you can go further. So again, while this shouldn't be a stressful posture, it should be relaxing, it's still active. You're always lifting out of that hip, pelvic area, always like someone's drawing you from the crown of your head. So it's at an angle, lifting you up. Always thinking about the toes towards the ceiling, gazing out the floor in front of you, thinking of where you're trying to go. Even if you never get flat on the floor, where would you be if you did? Your gaze is going in that direction. It's the intention. The journey, not the destination. A few more breaths here. Always pressing into the hands, the forearms, lifting more, extending more. Bring yourself back up, bring the legs in front, crossing right leg over left, sitting up nice and tall, twisting here so that left arm is going to hug the right thigh and the right hand is going to go behind the back, sitting tall. If you want, that left arm could come all the way over the knee, pushing a bit further, but staying tall. So you don't want to sacrifice the spinal position just to get that arm somewhere. Take some nice deep breaths here. Feeling this in the back for sure. Think about opening the right shoulder back so you're continuing opening the chest and shoulders and hopefully the hip a little bit as well. And releasing that back to center, extending the right leg, crossing the left leg over giving it a hug to lift yourself up. 
right arm is going to hug that knee, left hand is going to come behind, pull that left shoulder back to open it away. If you want, the right arm comes all the way over that knee. Inhaling and exhaling. Releasing that back to center, bending both knees, hold on to the backs of your thighs to lower yourself all the way down to the mat. Bringing the feet fairly close to you, palms next to you, we're going to do a few spinal tilts here. So using your breath as you inhale, press up to shoulders, as you exhale, release back down. Option to add the arms as well as you inhale, hips Lift up, coming to shoulders, arms extend, exhale, lower back down. Moving breath with movement. Inhale to tilt up, stretch over, exhale to lower back down. Go ahead and do one more. When you next get up, hold the up position. And then once you get there, you can go ahead and bring your arms back beside your body. Push the hips up even higher. If you want, bring the hands under the body, clasping the hands together, moving the shoulder blades together, moving the feet maybe a little closer to your body. Keep pushing the hips up. Keep pulling shoulders back, chin towards chest. If anyone wants to here, you could come to four-footed posture. This is one of those things, I think it has everything to do with proportions of your body. But if you want and you can, you're certainly welcome to grab your ankles in four-footed posture. Otherwise, just keep your hands behind your back. Absolutely fine. Notice your knees, there'll be a tendency to flare out. Try to keep them parallel rather than letting them drop out to the side. And go ahead and lower that back down, tugging knees into chest, giving yourself a little rock from side to side, massage that low back. Grabbing your block, bringing your block under your low back, your sort of um, sacrum area, and extend your legs, you've got legs up the block for our inversion. If you'd like, because we're working on thighs here and hips, you can go ahead and drop those legs open. I can't go very far, I have a wall here. But you can let gravity release those legs down, creating a nice stretch of your inner thighs. And if you want, you can bring those hands to that same cactus position, that goddess position, to open up the chest and shoulders again. I'm gonna bring my legs together, just because I'm kicking a wall, but you can leave your legs open if that works for you. Just a few breaths here. Just getting a nice relaxing inversion. No work really. Not like shoulder stand or headstand where you're super, super active. Check that your chin is still tucking towards your chest rather than pointing to the ceiling. Couple more breaths here. And then go ahead and bend in your knees, hugging your knees back into chest, lift up so you can get that block out from under you. Go ahead and move the block kind of behind your head. We're going to come to fish, and I know for some of you, you're going to find that block helpful. You might just have to move it out of the way. It just depends on you and your body. So for fish, you're going to reach your hands under your body. Fingertips are trying to reach your toes. Really work your shoulders under your body so you're opening up your chest. So you might just stay right here. So your shoulders are pulling back, legs are forward, chest is open, and your back is coming off the mat. If you want to come into more of a fish pose, you need to come up onto your forearms, so you're propped up on those forearms, and then let the head release back. This is where your block comes in handy. If your head goes down to the mat, you're fine. But if you find that your head is dangling in space, that's not a good look. 
So you want to bring that block under you so that when you drop your head back, it can land on the block. Throat is open. This is one of the only times when your chin is not tucking towards chest. Chin is towards the ceiling. Shoulders are pulling back. Chest is open, breathing into the heart. This is very much a heart opening posture. Breathe in. It's imagine that heart chakra, the center of your chest. Now that's where the string is, where it's normally in the crown of your head, lifting you up. Now it's that heart chakra area lifting you up. And then go ahead and release down out of that. Release your arms if you have a block there. Go ahead and move it out of your way. Hug your right knee into your body. Take your right hand, putting it on your right shin, left hand on your left hip, and just gently open that right leg out, creating a little bit of a stretch there. The hand is on your left hip to keep your left hip rooted so it doesn't roll over, because then you would lose the stretch. And then bringing the leg across, now you will twist, bring that left hand to the shin, bring that left knee across, and if your knee doesn't land on the floor, take your block and put your block under your knee to give it a place to land. Cactusing the arms turning and looking over the right shoulder, trying to keep the right shoulder in the mat. If you don't need the block or you want it at a lower level, you can do that. Take a few breaths here. Coming back to center, hug the left knee into the body, extend the right leg long, gently hugging the, right sh the left shin in, taking the left hand on the left shin, right hand on the right hip, gently pulling that shin out so you're opening your left thigh, left inner thigh, left hip. Bringing it back up, switching hands. Right hand comes to that left shin, bringing it across the body. And again, transfer your block over to the other side. Give that knee a place to land. Cactusing the arms. Turn the head and look over the left shoulder. Adjusting the knee, the block under your knee so that it's supported. If your knee is hanging in the air, it's not super comfortable. It's better if it can land on a block. And then rolling back to center, moving the block out of your way. Hug both knees into your body, give yourself a little hug, or rock from side to side. Transitioning this to happy baby, reaching in between, grabbing hold of ankles or feet. See if you can press the low back into the mat, chin to chest, knees coming towards the armpits, and giving yourself a little rock. Actively pushing out, so your arms here on the inner thighs, this is another hip opener. You're pushing out, opening the inner thighs as you rock gently. Again, a fun, relaxing posture, but still active. You're still extending the spine by pressing the low back down and chin towards the chest. You're still breathing and you're still opening the hips. Bring the soles of the feet together, coming to where we began when you're Sukta Baddha Panasana. Feet coming to the floor, knees dropping open. Again, you might find you want a block here. You can put the block under your thigh and that's going to help support you in this. It might feel better in your stretch. So see how that feels. You can always move it. You can always lower it down. Once again, invitation to cactus your arms to open up. If you'd like something more protected, a little safer, you can bring your hands to heart center and to your um, abdomen. And begin taking nice deep breaths. Belly breathing, so you're inhaling all the way down to your abdomen. 
Exhaling to release. Take maybe three to five of those really deep breaths. You can exhale through nose or mouth. Inhaling deeply and then exhaling however you want it. For a few times to allow your body to relax. Allow the hips to open. And once you've done those three to five deep breaths, it's up to you. You can stay right here where you are if you're enjoying this shoulder opening, hip opening kind of relaxation. If you want, you can extend your legs in your typical savasana. You can bring your arms down by your side and just allow your body to relax here. Inhaling, exhaling. Every inhale drawing in relaxation, every exhale letting go of tension. Again, allow the breath to deepen. Breathe in, imagine that oxygen is recharging all of your cells, all of your muscles, all of your joints, all the way down your arms and legs and out the top of your head. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes and roll your wrists and ankles. Allow your head to roll from side to side. If you're still in butterfly, gently close your legs together to release that stretch. Everybody bring the knees towards the chest and allow yourself to roll onto your side, coming to the fetal position. Pausing there for a moment, giving yourself a little hook. And then when you're ready, pressing yourself up, coming to a seated position. Spine long, legs crossed or wherever is comfortable, arms resting in your lap. Allow the muscles of your face to soften. And take another glance over your body, just an internal scan, noticing your state of being right now. Just an awareness. There's many sort of purposes and benefits of yoga, and one of them is just that self-awareness, being more aware of where your body is in space, and being more aware of what your body needs. Our bodies talk to us every single day, and through yoga, we hope to be able to learn to listen and to give it what it needs. Sending those arms out, inhaling, gathering energy as you breathe in deeply, pressing that ball of energy together over your head, and exhale as you release down, hands to heart center, delivering that energy to your heart chakra. Om Shanti Om. I wish you peace. Namaste.